So now I would like to request uh, the next uh, speaker, uh, Guruma Gayatri Ji, uh, to the process. Uh, kindly be ready. So a short introduction about Guruma. She is the founder member, trustee of a spiritual solution center, Bengaluru. She is a spiritual counselor, uh, energy healer, a woman wellness mentor, a mind coach, holistic hypnotherapist, and the past life regression therapist. She has conducted alternative uh, healing therapies, counseling, uh, regressions, uh, progression, uh, holistic uh, hypnotherapies uh, uh, to heal stress, anxiety, uh, emotional uh, traumas uh, for people from all walks of life, especially women. So she is an inspiring lady. So I heartily welcome uh, Guruma uh, Gayatri Ji for the session. So over to Guruma. Thank you, Vinay Ji. Namaste. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. <clears throat> my heartfelt pranams to the universal energy, my Guruji, all the masters, my parents, and to all the divine souls present in the seminar. Wishing you all happy Independence Day. Yes, a day of freedom, freedom from the illnesses, restrictions of the mind. My topic for today under Mano Yoga is Mind Miracles, and I'm happy to share my thoughts and experiences. Mind in totality is what I can say is our unique and precious gift. Yes, it's a gift to mankind. We have definitely been blessed by the divine to have this wonderful tool, channel, instrument for the world, whatever you want to name it as, it's our mind, a marvel by itself. We have heard Guruji talk about the marvel of the mind according to our yogic perspective. We have also heard Navinji speak and give us more ideas, informations about the mind in terms of modern psychology. Right? So let me give you my insight, my journey about mind. So after working in the information technology platform for about nine years, I got an opportunity to explore and experience this amazing world, this miracle world, as I like to call it always. And pouring out my experiential journey with you, it all started with the challenges faced by us in our day-to-day -day life. I got initiated into this ocean of mind power by my guru, Dr. Sri Ramachandra Guruji, who gave me an insight about the power of subconscious mind. Further, I got an opportunity to read through amazing book on the power of subconscious mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy, an Irish author who traveled to India, spent a lot of time with the Indian sages learning about the Hindu philosophy. Also, a book on the secrets of self-hypnosis by Dr. Bruce Goldberg and Dr. Deepak Chopra's book on mind-body medicine. Along with this, I got connected to the teachings of our own great masters and started understanding this as an ancient yogic science. The practices of yogasanas, pranayama, relaxations gave more clarity on how our mind interacts and heals our diseases, discomforts, this orders. In continuation to my study, 
I got an opportunity to work with thousands of minds through counselings, healings, hypnotherapy, samohana chikitse, as it is likely called in our culture. During my study, I realized that a simple migraine, yes, a simple migraine has got its own story. The bitterness in the so-called relationships is creating health hazards. The unknown challenges of life are attracting unknown disorders, discomforts, this eases in the life. As Naveen Ji gave us a beautiful explanation about stress, the positive aspect of stress and how it turns out to be the opposite, stress and anxiety is co contributing to the imbalances of the mind and affecting the physical body. We refer them as Adhija Vyadis, according to our yogic science, and have termed them as psychosomatic disorders in the modern science. They all start at the Manonmaya Kosha and precolates into the Pranamaya Kosha and then exhibit in the Annamaya Kosha, resulting in the disorder of our system. All right. So one particular session gave me a deeper insight on the miracles that the mind can perform. So I would quote this real life case study. Just give me a minute. Yes. So around some years back, this was a young gentleman, around 28 years old, CA by profession, who came to us suffering from severe migraine issues. Of course, as always, he had gone through all types of medications, from a regular painkiller to a steroid. And when he underwent a therapy session, in fact, not one, multiple sessions of the therapy, the mind drifted to a memory of a just born child. I would like to quote Dr. Navinji when he told about the neural pathways, how that memories create if it is very intense. Yes. And this memory was of a just born child being kept away from its mother alone in an incubator with a feeling of fear and being lost, disconnected. Amazingly, with a couple of therapies, by reworking, re-editing, re-correcting, replacing those current painful memories, a profound improvement was seen. And in about a few months, he was back to his normal happy health. So I'll just give you a little more brief about the observations, what we had here. From the day one to around say six months, the problem domain that we faced was the experience of migraine pains from early childhood. Yes, this got triggered probably when he was around 14, 15 years of age. And the symptoms reflected by him was headaches, dizziness, being moody, lack of sleep, low energy, which led to imbalances in his life from the age of 15. And he came to us around, say, 28, 27 years. Emotional traumas, insecurities, negative thoughts, loss of creativity, loss of concentration, disturbance, disturbances in the relationships, financial instabilities, and so on. 
So one problem or one challenge he faced, which has given rise to multiple problems in his life. Okay. So all these emotional blockages, they disappeared day by day as the therapy progressed, leading to an improvement, a systematic improvement, I would say, in his health. He was able to focus, concentrate on his work for long hours. The family bondage strengthened because, my dear friends, he did not want to be with anybody. He did not want to listen to anybody. He just wanted to be by himself. So family bondage strengthened. He was able to give time for his family. Family health improved because the family also was going through trauma as they were not able to help him. His business started to flourish as he was able to relax and listen to his client's needs. So the healing techniques which was applied here include yoga nidra healing, holistic hypnotherapy, pranayama, meditations, pratiprasava kriya yoga, regressions. This session formed the base for my future studies. The understanding that I got here was any problem that comes to us not only affects on our physical body, energy body, emotional body, but also has a tremendous effect on our family life, professional life, and social life. Right. So, mind is indeed the invisible, miraculous healer. I think I'm right when I'm telling this. The mind is indeed an invisible, miraculous healer. As already explained by our speakers, Guruji and Navinji, let us just go and understand a little bit about what is this mind. So, mind, it is a form of energy, invisible, non-physical, a medium, a channel, a path, an instrument through which all the cognitive faculties, what are those? Could be thoughts, emotions, imaginations, perceptions, memories, and many more that can be expressed. But my favorite term is the inner world, Mano Jagat. Now, what the psychology has to say about mind, let us understand that also. Mind is the pro primary domain, according to psychology, the analytical platform which helps to uncover the deep surfaced memories, problematic patterns, mental and emotional blockages, repetitive negative thoughts. Mind is populated by a large number of adaptive specializations, which are equipped with content-rich representations, concepts, inferences, regulatory variables. It also works on the new features of attention. As uh, Navinji said, mirror neutron system, like mirroring, so it can absorb that. Categorization, reasoning, learning, emotions, and motivation. So this is the psychology, what it is saying. Along with that, we have some few words from Einstein and Infeld, who states, physical concepts are free creations of the human mind and are not. However, it may seem 
uniquely determined by the external world. Yes. So, as Guruji says, Mano Yoga is a yogic science where the three states of mind, the Jagra, Swapna, Sushupti, are in balance to experience the bliss, that is the Turiya, right? So we will be experiencing all these states every day. Coming to the conscious state, the beta state, the rational thinking, analysis, decision making, creating beliefs, logic, reasoning activities, all these take place here. In this state, the EEG readings of the brain will be approximately about 14 cycles per second. The subconscious state, alpha, swapna, which works for the requirements that is communicated by the conscious mind. It's also a state of emotions where the emotions get exhibited and all the memories are stored. It takes care of the involuntary functions of our system. In this state, the EEG reading of the brain will be between seven to 13 cycles. Coming to the unconscious state, Sushupti, Tita. This is a state of deep sleep, a state of transformation, a state where healing happens. And in this state, the EEG readings would be between four to six cycles per second. And when we move on to the fourth state, the superconscious state, the Turiya or the Delta, as we call it, is the state which creates a connectivity with the cosmic energy, the Supreme Self. This is a link. The EEG here would be greater than zero to three cycles. Yes. Healing transformations occurs in the state of conscious, subconscious, and unconscious states. Yes. Here, I just happened to uncover an information about psychology, so which I wanted to share it with you from the National Library of Medicine, like how psychology can take further help to understand this vast science, yogic science, and come out with much more creative techniques and ideologies. So let me just you know, quote it for you. Psychology as a science of subject and comportment beyond the mind and behavior reference from the National Library of Medicine. The term of qualitative inquiry suggests a more open plural conception of psychology than just the science of the mind and behavior as it is most commonly defined. Historical, ontological and epistemological binding of this conception of psychology to the posit positivist method of natural science may have exhausted its possibilities and after having contributed to its prestige as a science has now become an obstacle. It is proposed that psychology be reconceived as a science of subject and comportment in the framework of a contextual interpretation, social human behavioral science. Thus, without rejecting quantitative inquiry, psychology recovers territory left aside like introspection, pre-reflective self-awareness, and reconnect with traditions marginalized from the mainstream. From this perspective, psychology might also 
recover its credibility as human science in view of the current skepticism. To summarize, mind has been referred from our ancient lifetimes to our very own modern scientific era. However, my exploration journey is from the picture of my experience. So we will move on to one more aspect of the mind where we have now understood that the mind is powerful, that the mind can be our friend, that the mind can also turn out to be our enemy. So let us see if we can take the support of this mind and help ourselves to make this mind as our best friend. Yes, I like to call my mind as my best friend. So this is a beautiful concept that we are now going to is communicating with the mind. Now, how the mind actually works with the information that gets ignited from the chitta, gets labeled through the identity ahamkara, and it travels through the buddhi and exhibits from the manas is a miracle by itself. Here, I would like to refer to a DNA experiment that was explained by a scientist, Greg Braden. Let me just connect that for you. Yes, I think it is there, yeah. So these were experiments done by the military. Eucocytes, that is the white blood cells, were collected for DNA samples from donors, right? And they were placed in chambers. So they could measure the electrical changes. So in this experiment, the donor was placed in one separate room and was subjected to continuous emotional stimulations, which was through the video clips. Now, this generated different emotions in the donor naturally. When we are looking into some videos, which is triggering some emotions in us, you know, it triggers those emotions. So that was generated and it was recorded. Now, the beautiful part here was the DNA of the same person, which was placed in a different room, however, in the same building, both the DNA and the donor were monitored and the donor exhibited the emotional peaks or valleys, the similar emotions and valleys were exhibited by the DNA also. I repeat, identical responses at the same time. There was no lag time, there was no transmission time. Exactly at the same time, Guruji, quoted in his first sentence, in his opening sentence, as science and spirituality are the sides of the, are the two sides of the same coin. Yes. The DNA peaks and the valleys exactly matched the peaks and the valleys of the donor also. So not only at the exact time, but the peaks and valleys of the DNA matched with the peaks and valleys of the donor's emotions also. Now, in the modern science, when we do experiments, we are not satisfied, you know, it's always our rational mind, analyzing mind. So the military also wanted to see how far they could separate the donor from his DNA. You remember, I had told that that DNA was separated, kept in a separate room, but in the same building. So now they moved ahead and they separated it, the DNA, probably about a distance of 15 miles. That is what it is saying here, around 15 miles. 
between the DNA and the donor. And the same result was recorded. Same experiment, distance was more, the same result was recorded. No lag time, no transmission time. The DNA and the donor had the same identical responses in time. And the experiment, that particular experiment was stopped there. Other experiments also were carried on. But right now I'm just quoting this experiment. So with this experiment, we understand that whenever we communicate with our mind, it could be externally, it could be internally. Externally, I say because it could be from some other mode to some hetero practices or internally is, you know, when I'm in meditation, it affects on our system. As very rightly explained scientifically by Naveenji. So, my dear friends, whatever we speak to ourselves is getting observed, is getting recorded, is getting stored, and also processed by our mind. Right? So, this is the contraction when those words were, you know, the expansion of the DNA that happened when the beautiful words like love and compassion, how those DNA strands expanded, the relaxed, right? So that is what it shows from Greg Braddon's experiment, right? So now I believe we are also interested to understand and experience if we can communicate with our mind. Yes, we can definitely communicate with our mind and we are doing so without our knowledge throughout our day, 24 by seven. But now in this small practical session, let us communicate with our mind, with our awareness and see if our mind will listen to us and if it would reflect that change that we are asking or requesting that mind to reflect. Shall we do this? Good. So let's get ready for a small practice session. It would be a short session. I think I would have some five minutes. Yes. So here, we will be using a golden word. Yes, it is a golden word. Relax. What is the word? Relax. And what we would be doing is, we would just be repeating it. Repeating the word relax loudly for some time and mentally for some time. And then we will see what happens. What is the changes? Let's observe that, right? So sit comfortably. Gently close your eyes. Observe your breathing. the normal, natural breath. You are an observer here. You're observing. Observing your body. Observing your breath. Right. Take a deep breath. Once again, breathe in deeply and breathe out completely. 
Breathing in deeply. Breathing out completely. Deep breath. Good. Relax. Now, slowly repeat the golden word. Relax. Tell it loudly for you to hear it. Relax. 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 You're hearing the word relax. 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 Now, mentally keep repeating relax in your mind. Relax. 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 Remain in silence for a few seconds. Yes, register the changes that you notice in your mind and body. Take a deep breath. And slowly open your eyes and come out of relaxation. Welcome back.
Yes. So I would want you to observe the changes consciously that has happened and thank yourself for being able to experience the power of your own mind by continuously repeating the word relax that is what we did in this practice repeatedly continuously we repeated the word relax our body and mind started to relax yes so with this experience i would like to conclude my session with a note that mind is indeed the miraculous healer it miraculously heals the emotional imbalances psychosomatic disorders challenges of our life so taming training guiding purifying reprogramming the mind will help us to lead happy healthy successful life and the path of yoga given by our ancient masters if it can become the way of our living we are definite to enjoy experience and live this life journey to the fullest i am seeing mind miracles every day in my life and in the lives of others yes so our next speaker rekha ji would help us understand the role of prana in creating the body mind harmony i would like to offer my gratitude to the universal energy to all the masters to guruji to all the dignitaries organizers and the supporters for giving me this opportunity to be pre- to present my thoughts about mind in this international seminar on mano yoga my heartfelt gratitude to all divine souls for your participation as well thank you namaste so thank you thank you so much uh, to uh, gurma gayatri uh, for her uh, wonderful session uh, with the experimental and experiential practices so it was really wonderful uh, of uh, relaxation of the mind so thank you so much uh, before going to the next speaker uh, we have uh, one more a great personality shri uh, rotarian uh, dr nagaraja rao ji uh, who is an a chairman uh, for the academic of uh, yoga academics and uh, rotary bangalore global yoga and he is one of the great personalities in yoga which ever i have seen so he has a great experiment uh, experiments and experiences in the field of uh, yoga from past uh, 30 to 40 uh, years so uh, he has been trained under great himalayan masters so with the great experiences he is sharing his wonderful knowledge uh, through the academics uh, in most of the universities especially in uh, yoga university of the americas right now whereas in is been working with us so i heartily welcome uh, dr mk nagraja rao sir uh, to give us a few words and views so over to uh, nagraja rao sir guru ji namaste uh dear rotarians and the organizers and all the scholars who have been presenting their uh, ideas till now we have heard three main presentations mainly on the topic of the mind and its activities i with all my 
gratitude express my thanks to all the scholars because knowingly or unknowingly they have really substantiated the very ideas of our seers and sages the seers and sages of india have really developed a wonderful technique of culturing the activities of the mind and in the due course of uh, practices we have lost all such techniques and perhaps uh, today uh, vishwanath guruji uh, dr navin jayram and gurma gayatri have really presented a wonderful topic and they have really made a thorough research in this regard while quoting the concepts of uh, mandukya upanishad dr vishwanath guruji has really described the state of wakefulness the dream the sushupti or the deep sleep and also he went on to explain to the fourth state of the consciousness manayeva manushyana karanam bandha moksha yoho the mind alone is responsible for the bondage and the liberation so explaining all the psychological planes has really given us very good idea about the ideas given by our seers and sages in the modern language of course the contemporary thoughts really need a substantiation from the background ideas the ideas given by our uh, our people on the other hand dr navin jayram has really turned the topic into more scientific way when he spoke much on the endocrinology the neurological system how does the mind as an entity though it is not a physical entity as an entity how it works he has really presented chanchala api sthira bhutva kamala tatratishthati this is a quote even a person with all chanchalata a schizophrenic or any such person can be cured by by way by a verbal rhythm the verbal rhythm is the om this is what vishnu guru ji has also quoted we have so many mantras through such verbal rhythms whatever may be the psychological status such uh, any variation can be cured can be set right can be brought on to your right track by the verbal uh, rhythms this is what even chenchala pistira about he spoke about the curdling love the secretion of the oxytocin how a mother takes her baby to her lap then the lactation naturally happens that is the effect of oxytocin we have learned through the experiments in the same way chenchala pistira bodwa a person with all ambiguity unstable mind can be brought into a state of stability this has already been already been quoted in our text the only thing we really have a responsibility to convert all the uh, ideas which are in sanskrit language to the contemporary contemporary scientific language we really need to bring it guru ma gayatri has also taken a real turn while explaining the wonders of the mind the mahima the miraculous uh, way of the mind that's really good uh, we have looked into the uh, deepest thoughts of our rishis in these three presentations i am really happy because without any deviations to the present from the present day science also no deviations from the past scientific aspects these presentations have come really in a very very good manner but this really needs uh, further research uh, further study and further uh, improvements because from the wakefulness to the dream and dream to the deep sleep what is we really quote in the psychology or what is called hypnogogic state and hypnopompic states these states ought to be again and again examined these are all explained in our text but in the sanskrit language that is only difficulty 
those who know sanskrit language well they do not know the contemporary science those who are well versed with the contemporary science they do not know the sanskrit language let's all learn that language to make our experiments and studies not only the jagrat sopna and the shushupti while explaining the uh, the uh, chatushtaya the antakarana chatushtaya mano buddhi ahankara chitta chitta is the core of the entire consciousness where all the impressions are stored using the mind as a tool they are expressed so there are so much of explanation even the somatic treatments are ne- not neglected neglected in yoga janma aushadhi mantra tapas samadhi ja siddhaya there could be some congenital problems how to how to treat the congenital problems and how to treat the somatic body how to t- treat the mental body or the intellectual body or the emotional one or the logical one does the energy play any role in this regard these are all the questions with our rishis also they have really contributed a great literature with uh, with their with the, with their long services with people anyway it's really a wonderful presentation by all the three scholars i wish them uh, a good luck in their further research work because this is i feel this is only a very good beginning this good beginning has to go a long way to present our ideas to the community of the world i wish all of them a good luck and i really thank the organizers and the scholars who have presented uh, and also i welcome the other scholars i wish to listen to them also thank you for thank you for giving me an, an opportunity to speak in between and thank you again the organizers thank you yes uh, thank you thank you so much uh, guruji for your wonderful time uh, giving us over here Uh, so we heartily once again thank you so much for your precious time and valuable uh, uh, addressing uh, for the speakers and for further developments so thank you so much with your all blessings